My name is Wayne Brunt from Fremont United Methodist Church. It's an honor to be able to be a part of the celebration of life for Christian. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet they shall live. And whoever lived and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we are gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Christian. We come together in grief, honestly acknowledging our human loss. May God search our hearts that in our pain we may find comfort. In sorrow, God's hope. In the face of death, we might understand resurrection. Our hope is not based on something we have or have not done. Our hope is sure because of what God has done in God the Son. Dying Jesus Christ, God the Son, destroyed our death. Rising Christ restored our hope and eternal life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Christian put on Christ. As, in, as Christian accepted Jesus as his Savior in this life, and so in Jesus Christ may Christian now be clothed with glory in death. Here and now, dear friends, we can be God's children. What we, shall, what, you, what we shall be has not yet been truly revealed. But we know that when Jesus appears, we who have accepted Jesus as our Savior shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Let us pray. O oh God who gave us birth, You are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now Your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your vital message of life and death. Amen. Would you please join me now in watching this song in times like these.
What a beautiful song. It is our solid rock, our Heavenly Father. Christian M. Filippi, age 74 of Nuevo, formerly of Fremont, passed away unexpectedly on Tuesday, March 14th of 2023 at Corwell Spectrum Health Butterworth Campus in Grand Rapids. Christian was born on July 28, 1948 in Dearborn, Michigan, and moved to Tennessee where he spent his younger years. Christian met and later married Susan Deitz on August 11, 1978 near Golden, Colorado, and they moved back to Fremont in 1986 from Colorado. Christian had served in the United States Navy as a photographer during the Vietnam War until his honorable discharge. Christian owned and operated photography by Christian for over 23 years in Fremont. Christian was a member of the Fremont United Methodist Church where he had been a lay speaker. He enjoyed coin collecting, marble collecting, playing video games, playing piano, listening music from the 40s and 50s, and had been a director for the Stage Door Players for 15 years for several theatrical productions. Christian is survived by his wife, Susan of Nuevo, his son, Andrew Charles Tyler Filippi of Grand Rapids, his sister, Cindy Glidewell of Finger, Tennessee, sister-in-law Jane, uh, friends and brother-in-law William, Rhonda Dietz, several nieces. Christian was proceeding to death by his parents, Charles and Opal Farmer Filippi. Um, I talked to Susan and Drew the other day, briefly on the phone, and I know that Christian was involved in photography. I think he took many, many photographs of high school pictures and around the area. And he also was, uh, loved the theater and was mainly through the Nuevo County Stage Door Players. Since I didn't know Filippi or Christian um, personally, I found an article, a play that was promoting the adult memories of a 1930s wedding night called For Marriage Only. The article said that this was the baby of its director, retired photographer, Christian Filippi of Fremont. I noticed something different. He said, this is for adults only. So I just wonder what that play was all about. It was a night of married, so I'm just, uh, just wondering in my mind what that was about. I'm sure it was a wonderful production. Gary Evans, a good friend of mine and a lay speaker here at Fremont United Methodist Church. Uh, Susan and I were talking about him, and Gary wrote some words as well. I have known Christian for a long time. I believe that I met him through his father-in-law, Max Dietz, at St. John's Episcopal Church, or when our sons were in the same grade in school. I believe the Flippies uh, created the two stained glasses at St. John's, but do not know if it was Susan or Christian that did the work. I also spent time discussing the issues of the world with Christian when Drew and Scott were in Weblo Den together, and we were waiting for their meetings. That brings back a lot of memories. Weblos, that's a long time ago for me. Some of the discussions were frequent depending on the involvement excuse me, involvement Christian had with the stage door players where he would not talk for months. As, as our boys graduated, we see less of each other than at church, and we always had conversations on what the church was trying to accomplish with the different programs, be uh, Simple Church or VCI. We always had something to talk about. With the, with the photography business, Christian had a matting and framing storefront on Main Street. He always did quality work and seemed to have all the materials needed for his customers' needs. The last couple of years, I would only see Christian when he and Susan would come to church. The conversations now had changed to how you are doing or what did you think of the message today, which usually led uh, to discussions again. So that was just some of the brief uh, things that I uh, dug up a little bit about Christian. I noticed one thing about coin collecting and marble collecting, and I wonder what the music was like of the 40s and 50s. That's a little before my time but I was brought up in the 70s and 80s, so I'm sure the music was just divine, 40s and 50s. Was he an Elvis fan, perhaps? Not particularly with Elvis, okay. Love George Gershwin, well, there you go, okay. I wanna ask for Drew to come up. Uh, he wants to share a little bit. Uh, we're gonna be with him during this time, and he wants to say a few things about his dad. I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, my dad probably would have wanted me to write a speech and remember all my lines and say this perfectly, but you know, even though we were very similar in the way that we were theatrical and musical, we're very different, so I'm going to improv this short and sweet from the heart as best I can. Um, 
I know it, it would have meant a lot to see each and every one of you here. Um, he touched a lot more people's lives more deeply than we really knew. And I mean, we knew, but the things that you've all said in the last week have meant a lot to know just how much he really meant to you guys as well. So it really does mean a lot that you're all here. Um, most of you know it was really sudden, the way we lost him, and it was really, really hard to you know, prepare for that. Um, as far as the grieving process, that's going to be the hardest part from probably me and my mom. So if, if anybody has any guidance or support on how to deal with that sudden loss, if you could you know, pass that on to me and my mom, that would be amazing. Um, Speaking of my mom, um, I've, I want to say that I you know, really respect and love everything that she's done and how well she's handled this. Um, but I do want to say that I, I know that since they've moved here from Fremont to Nuevo during COVID, that both of my parents got disconnected from a lot of their friends the way that they were before. And without dad around, I know my mom could really use a lot of your guys' extra support or calls. Or if you're around Nuevo or you can think to to visit her or do anything for her, I would really appreciate that. I know Christian would, too. I don't really know what else to say other than thank you guys so much and that, uh, you know, we all know that my dad was a, a really special guy. He wasn't ready to go. Um, he really, really wanted to do that play one more time. Um, he talked about it literally until the day he died. He was talking to me and my mom about which... Nurses would be the best young Fanny and young Earl to play in the play, so he was very serious about doing that, and uh, I think in his honor, I want to do a rendition and, and direct that play for him one more time. So that's another thing that if anybody from the theater community that's here would like to help, or you know, anybody that would like to get involved for the first time, I think that's something that I feel really inspired to do. You know, we don't have a timeline, but you know, if you'd like to help, that'd be something that we'd all really appreciate seeing happen one more time for him. Um, kind of at a blank of what else to say other than thank you guys so much for being here and for being a part of all of our lives and for you know, making his life more enriched and enjoyable because you know, every, everyone that's here I'm sure played a part in making his life better and more enjoyable and I'm sure he's very pleased and honored to know how much that he touched all of your lives as well. So thank you all so much for letting us know that and for being here to support us. Jack, are you ready to... Please stand. I want you all to sing a song in, in special honor of Christian standing on the promises.
seated. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. One of my favorites is Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 12. A little bit of talk about a little, the message today about God's time frame. There's a time for everything. There's a reason you're here. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and then a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. You heard what Drew said in his dedication to his father. Drew, you can't be prepared. I lost my father in a matter of an instant as well, and I feel your pain. The grieving process for all of us is different. But I can tell you one thing. God will never forsake you. He will always be with you. Right now we live in a time, but we were made for more. We need to hold on to that. Though we live our lives on a timeline now, birth, life, death, yet Ecclesiastes said that he has put eternity into man's heart, but in such a way that he can't fully understand that. The New Testament echoes this, encouraging believers that we have eternity to fully grasp God's glorious works in this world. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I've been fully known. This longing for something beyond this earthly life is a divine gift, meant to help us fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary. But what is seen is eternal. I mention this with every service that I have, that I do, is that the relationship that you have with your Heavenly Father is the most important relationship you have. The past is in the past. Today we live today. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You cannot waste one second thinking about your relationship with your Heavenly Father. If you don't have a relationship with Him, come see me after the service. Don't ever doubt, ever, about your relationship with Him. It is the most important relationship you will ever have. Life only has meaning when lived in relationship with God. Solomon wants his readers to know that he has tried everything in a relentless pursuit to find the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life to you? He's tried gaining knowledge and wisdom and being very righteous. He's tried indulging himself with everything that money could buy. Hmm. He's tried working hard and playing hard. He's tried pursuing fame and greatness and passion, and in the end, found all of this very empty. Depending on what translation you're reading, the resounding refrain of the book of Ecclesiastes is some variation on these words. Listen to these. Meaningless. Pointless. Vanity. 
futility and useless. When any of these things mentioned above are pursued wholeheartedly, they become like chasing the wind. We all want to be happy and pursue it in various ways as Solomon did, but only one way will truly provide happiness, pursuing God Himself. It is just no good asking God to make us happy in our own way without bothering about religion. God cannot give us a happiness and peace apart from Himself because it is just not there. Joy can be found in life through gratitude of God's gifts. As we all know, life is a gift. Though it sounds like a cliche, deep down we know this is true. We did not create ourselves, and after all, what do we have that we did not receive? Everything is from Him. Though life is full of hardship, it's also full of beauty. If we have eyes to see, after experiencing all the world to offer in terms of luxuries and worldly pleasures, Solomon emphasized simple things as the ones which would bring real joy. Under the sun, which is the way Solomon refers to this earthly life. He mentions family, food and drink, honest work as aspects of life that can give satisfaction in a temporal sense as we live out our lives on earth. We don't put our hope in them or expect them to give us lasting fulfillment, but we can thank God for them, enjoy them as good gifts, knowing that whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father. Ecclesiastes 5.2 says, Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven, and you are here on earth. And let your words be few. As I was listening to Drew talk about his father and thanking him, he made a plea to you, each and every one of you, that he and his mom will need you as friends. I hope you heard that. That comes straight from the heart to help someone grieve when someone's taken away so quickly and not expected. Just don't make the mistake that I made is running away from God, run to God. When you lose someone special, you run to him because his lap is the biggest lap you'll ever set upon. And his arms are as wide from east to the west. He's waiting to embrace you and say, come, come. I know you're hurting. Come. Come to me. I'll give you peace. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Christian. Before Christian was yours, you know, before he was ours, he was yours. For all the good Christian has given us to make us what we are, for that of that life which grows in each of us, and for Christian's life, that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. And now we offer Christian back into your arms. We pray for comfort in our loneliness, strength in our weakness, and courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another. Make us faithful to serve one another. And help us to know that peace and joy, which is eternal life, eternal life, which you have made available through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Into your hands we commend your child, Christian. We commend Christian to you in sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ. Christian body, we commit to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Receive into your arms your servant, Christian. And grant that now, increasingly in knowledge and love of you, Christian may go from strength to greater strength in service now in your heavenly kingdom. And everyone said, Amen. We have another special song. This is beautiful. Y'all please uh, sing this one. You don't have to stand. You can sing this one by Josh Groban. He raised me up.
I am down and oh my soul so weary When troubles come and my heart burns Then I am still silent till you come sit a while with me I'm so stormy sea I am strong when I am on your shoulders raise me up to more than I can be I am strong when I raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me What a beautiful song. Not only the lap is big, so are the shoulders that you can rely on. I'll close with this. I understand to many people it seems strange that we can smile through our tears. A celebration of life is supposed to be celebrated because we know our loved one is finally made it home. It's not that we, the tears are because we miss them dearly. And there's also tears of celebration, knowing that your father, if he loved theater so much, I'm sure God will put him to work pretty quickly. He will have a role to play. If he likes singing in the choir, if he was a lay leader, he will be used in the kingdom of heaven. And the nights that your head hits the pillow and you're wondering why your heart still hurts, you can know that your Father is with you.
and your husband is with you. And for all the people that love you and will hold you through this time of grief, God's shoulders are large and wide. And I just know that He will never leave you and you can always rely on Him. We'll close in prayer. We praise You for Your child Christian whom You have revered unto Yourself. Grant peace to his soul. Let perpetual light shine upon him. And help us so to believe that your presence may lead us through our remaining years and bring us at last with Christian into all your saints the joy of your eternal home. For us, we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll also bless the meal in just a moment after our final song. I will have you uh, stand in honor of any, I won't say the B word in, in church, but any Southern Baptist that remember this song, you're not supposed to say the B word in church. But this song brings me back to my childhood with my father. He was a deacon in the church in Central Texas, and I lost him when, he was, when I was 13, and this was one of his favorite songs. So I'm glad that you picked this song. Would you please stand and join in singing The Old Rugged Cross? On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that. and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I
may be seated. Beautiful. Our final thoughts. For the benediction, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. This concludes our service. I'll turn it back over to Kurt, our funeral director, for additional directions. Thank mm-hmm. you.